Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the new episode of Culture Together, a part of Interface Project. And as our family is getting bigger, as you can see, we thought, why not talk about family? So today's topic is going to be family, and we are going to talk about uh, the family, everything about family in our countries. So let's introduce our guests. Um, hi, I'm Julia. I'm from Russia, 22. Hi, I'm Samson from Nigeria, 29. Yeah, I'm Jin Xuan Zhang. I from China on the 26th. <laughs> okay, so let's start from you, Julia. Yeah. Uh, can you describe a typical uh, Russian family? How big or mm. how small it is? Okay, um, the typical Russian family is a pretty nuclear family. So usually it is two parents, one child. Uh, two kids is pretty rare and three is like very rare. Mm -hmm. Almost nobody has like three kids. Also, we have pretty high uh, divorce rate. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not a family with two parents, but a kid lives with a mother and a father, like they meet on weekends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. And what about you, Samson, in Nigeria? Yeah, in Nigeria and also in some part of Africa, we have uh, both the extended family and the nuclear family. Over the years, the extended family uh, was common, where you have uh, a, a father, mother with the children, the uncles, niece and nephews all living together, their grandparents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, presently things are changing gradually. People are moving from a standard uh, type of family to more nuclear family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this could be attributed to, of course, changes like a um, high increase in poverty rate crime and the people are becoming more concerned about their own personal things. So I can say presently now in, in Nigeria, mm -hmm. the most families, especially in the urban areas, are nuclear, mm -hmm. while in some part of the rural area we still have uh, the extended family. Typically Chinese family just have parents, mom and dad and one children, yeah. Every family can have two children, mm -hmm. but it's maximum, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but um, the young people decide don't to have the second children because it's very hard work for them. So for um, yeah, for example, if the mom went to work or mm -hmm. went to do some stuff, it, yeah, yes. kids need some time. Yeah, it will be difficult for her to both career and the family. So it's um, mm -hmm. okay. So it would be really like easy in China. So like we can ask how many siblings do you have, but in China you just ask do you have brother or sister because they have two <laughs> yeah, kids two. at max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, you said you have uh, big families in, yeah. in Africa because even in India we have big families yeah. mm -hmm. and things are changing. But uh, what are the reasons that you have the big families compared to other countries? Yeah, I think. Uh, one reason is because um, there's a saying in, uh, in Africa that a uh, 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 family, what I mean by family now, mother and father, a family do not train a child. Mm -hmm. It's a common mm -hmm. saying. And what does that mean? It means the sole responsibility of bringing up a child mm -hmm. it, it lies on the community, both mm -hmm. uncle, aunts, cousins, in-laws. Mm -hmm. For example, if, I, if I'm out there and do something wrong and my mother or my father is not there, if my uncle is there, he will caution me immediately. Mm -hmm. So because of this, people are more uh, connected. There's this connection between not just the mother and the father, but everybody, the mm -hmm. nephew, the niece. So people are more closer to each other. Uh, and uh, this plays a, a vital role and uh, it's difficult to remove this part of the in the behavior in the family. Then, then I can say that uh, we culturally Nigeria and India is a little bit closer. Yeah, yeah. Because we also have a big family just to have a have a feeling of a family. Yes. Like a family yes. uh, you have like at least one brother or one sister. And in India there is no policy for many child. For example, it doesn't matter if you have three child or four four children. It's always you have to raise them. The government is not yeah. supporting financially. Yes. Mm -hmm. So people are like you know going towards a small family, I would exactly. say, and a separate exactly. family. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, 
if I want to ask you the influence of uh, parents on your life, if we have to uh, talk about like generally in Ru in Russia, but what would you say? If we talk about yeah, like generally, um, no, I think it depends on the family. Half half, maybe fifty fifty, because some mm -hmm. families are more modern and they give more freedom to their kids, but some families are more conservative and they're like, yes, if we had. 10 doctors in our families before you're going to be a doctor anyway mm -hmm. so it might but i think that's everywhere what do you say is it true in your country like if your father is doctor or, or an engineer they do they force you or they guide you they they expect you to be an engineer yeah i mean yeah of course it happens but uh i would say uh as a child while growing up uh, your parents have a strong influence on you in, in Nigeria, and this is because you know your child, your your, your mother, your father, you know, provide everything for you. The clothes mm -hmm. you wear, the food you eat, and there's this belief that provided they are still catering for you, provided they are giving you all those things, you have to be obedient. So in other words, they believe they have more experience to guide you. So, but uh, this is too much because you have a situation whereby a father, for example, who uh, is a, a, a maybe like she said a, a lawyer will want the child to probably grow up to become a lawyer maybe to inherit the mm -hmm. law firm mm -hmm. so also other, other, in other cases you see a mother who wanted the daughter to, or the son to become a doctor why because when she grow old she wants someone <laughs> to take care of her <laughs> so yeah. or if your father is a politician he wants you to read law mm -hmm. because of course you know he will have so many law cases <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. so the, 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 uh, in the family in Africa, the parents have strong influence on their children. Uh, they decide when you are, from when you are born, they decide, for example, which area of education mm -hmm. are you going to? Are you going to go into science or social sciences or art? Mm -hmm. And when you finish, they want to decide if you are going to do the engineering. Of course, in Nigeria, the common uh, course of study is engineering, um, law, and uh, medicine. Why? Because they believe that when you study this trick or any of these three courses, you will have a better chance of uh, getting a job and taking care of them. Mm -hmm. And having so, a good life. And having a good life. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, parents have strong influence on us in uh, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what about in China? Uh, in China, I s mm, yeah. I think parents have more experience than us, so if they give some advice to us, so we can think about and uh, we can decide to do it or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it depends on the personality of persons. If you have a great idea about your life, what do you want to do or do you, you don't want to do that, so you can make a choice by yourself. But if you are confused about the future, about the job, about the marriage, of something about that, so if your parents give you advice, you can you can listen and you can think and then and then you can decide by yourself. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm I'm not really independent. So um, my friends advise my parents advise me to come to German so I just come so when I'm, when I'm here so I think it's not a bad decision mm -hmm. so it's good I can learn more language English German and I also can meet different friends on the come of different lang countries and yeah it's great so you respect that decision that yeah. parents made on your behalf yeah yeah okay okay that's very nice and uh, in India we also have a big influence of parents on your life. For example, when you when you're growing or uh, growing older, they always you know guide you in life. Uh, you should behave like this. You should be like this. You should learn these skills. You should study this. So I would say, like every uh, one of us here have the same yeah. uh, the situation in the country. Yeah, because they're mm -hmm. parents. They are parents. Yeah. That's right. But but actually, uh, what I see here in Germany after being for more than one year, mm -hmm. here parents don't have that much influence that we have mm -hmm. in our country because parents are like, do whatever you want to do. I mean, I can suggest, but... Yeah, in Russia sometimes, um, like most of the times, the parents, until you, are, you come of age, until you're in teen, uh, parents guide you, and then when you're 18, you're an adult, and so you can make your decisions. In Russia, at what age do you start living separately from your parents? 
Uh, usually it is. It happens when you finish your school and then you enter the university and people, young people usually move to another city to study, either to a bigger city or just to another city to see like new life and to live separately from the parents. So usually it happens after school when uh, we enter the university and we move to another city. And in Nigeria? Uh, there's no uh, definite age, there's no mm -hmm. age limit. Uh, I think this is controlled by your ability to live independently. Can you pay in your house rent? Can you take care of yourself? Take care of your responsibility because you, as if you are growing up and probably finish secondary school, then move to the university, your parents believe that they still have the responsibility of taking care of you. Mm -hmm. So, but afterward, maybe if you find a job, then definitely you probably have, you find a place for yourself and live alone. But if you don't have a job, most people still live with their parents when mm -hmm. they don't have any mm. job, of course. Because if they leave their, their home, where would they go to? They don't have, they don't have fund maybe from any other place to mm -hmm. support them. And what about China? Uh, in China, we, we don't have support from government for this stuff. Mm -hmm. When the, the situation is just like the Russia, so we live a uh, family just because we need to go to college. Mm -hmm. the, normally, the college is not in our city, in, in, in country city, right? Uh, yeah, it's just uh, mm, so you need to find a new room in a, uh, in the uh, university mm -hmm. city. So, but the university has some 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 students. Uh, uh, dormitories. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, for every student. So, maybe four people or six or the. Eight people share one room, mm -hmm. so we living wow. together. But uh, yeah, but after we finish us uh, studying, yes, we just uh, sometimes we we can choose go to some big city, uh, such like um, capital of China's Beijing, when some international city Shanghai is mm -hmm. very good chance for everyone. But it's also hard life in there. Yeah. When uh, with, yeah, uh, with such little money, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. When the, yeah, also some uh, a lot of students choose go back to, con uh, so to to their city. Okay, so uh, that happens to us, as you said, when you leave home, when you go to the university or the mm -hmm. college, mm -hmm. you might fall in love with somebody. Yeah, <laughs> happens. that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I want to ask about uh, do your culture accept this girlfriend boyfriend relationships mm -hmm. or something? In Russia, it's very um, common and open. Um, people start having boyfriends, girlfriends like at 16, I would say. So you can yeah. talk about your boyfriend with your family? Yeah, yeah, it's completely okay. That is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Nigeria? Wow. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, it's complicated. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, and why is it complicated? Because Nigeria is a religious country. Uh, for, for instance, a child who comes from a religious country, who, of course, our parents, you know, how they are brought up, they, they were told they need to get to a certain age or a certain point in their life when they will introduce a lady to them and they eventually get married. This has been the practice over the years. So because of that, parents try to teach their kids or their children the same way of living. That as a child, you just have to focus on your education, focus on making yourself you know, comfortable before you get to the age where you can have a, a what you call a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. so, so if you are one of maybe from such family and you've been trained on this line that you, sh you don't need to have a girlfriend at a young age, then nobody, people, most kids don't do this. Mm -hmm. But there are also some people who also, yeah, they, they depend on the kind of parents they have, they don't care, they know, because this type of parent believe that a child needs to develop in all angles, in all ramifications, you need mm -hmm. to develop academically, culturally. As part of your development, you need to also understand how, you know, human human relationship works. Mm -hmm. So you, in that case, they will understand when you tell them you have a girlfriend, so, wow, 
said, oh, yeah, I'm proud of you. you <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's why I said it's, it's based on individual. And, uh, mm-hmm. But generally, generally, it's not something very common. In fact, it's something near secretive. Let me use the word near, very secretive. For you to have a girlfriend and you come to your parents telling them you have a girlfriend is not so common mm-hmm. in Nigeria. Okay, I, I would say we are very much close in in a term of culture. Yeah, yeah, you just explain. I don't need to explain so the scenario in, in India. <laughs> <laughs> so many things in common. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And in um, China, yeah, in China has a very weird situation. So before we do, uh, before we go to college, uh, the family and the school don't advise us to uh, have a girlfriend or boyfriend. They want to us focus on study and uh, yeah and then we, we can have a good notes degree mm-hmm. and then we can go to a good college and they told us so if you go to college you can make uh, try uh, make any choice you want so you can make friend uh, boyfriend girlfriend yeah it's okay but uh, when we go to college it's really difficult because we yeah, we should meet someone and we should fall in love with him or her, yeah. And uh, the parents will c- care about, why don't you have a girlfriend or boyfriend? <laughs> why you don't have? <laughs> so you need to have one and then you can get married with, yeah, get married to him or her. Yeah, it will be um, good, but you, so it's, it's changing to to family so they just um, t- after the school they went to we- as soon as possible can have a boyfriend or girlfriend for every young people yeah mm-hmm. and uh, if we don't have we have a, a, a lot of stress from them okay. they will ask why 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 don't you have so it will be give you a difficult question to answer. <laughs> so it's um, I don't know how to say. It. It's possible you can meet someone, but you you have also possible you can't meet someone. That yeah. Is so we can't um, change this situation. But yeah. uh, I think we, we yeah we should uh, we should. Um, be honest to ourselves if we really want to do something mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. do it yeah you know the funny yeah, cool. the funny thing is even like in nigeria even mm-hmm. uh, the the parent who a parent that told the child don't uh have a girlfriend or don't put your mind on having a girlfriend mm-hmm. well still uh, maybe when the child turned maybe 25 26 like she said mm-hmm. same <laughs> come asking you why don't you have a girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so funny. So yeah. in India, instead of uh, you know asking about girlfriend or boyfriend, because in in my language that is Gujarati, uh, my mother language, we don't have any term so that I can say she is my girlfriend or boyfriend. I mean, I don't have any translated word in my language. Mm-hmm. So when wow. there is when there is no word in language, then there is no space in the culture. <laughs> so if I just translate a girlfriend into my language, it will be just a translation. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. Tri yeah. mitra. Okay. It's just like a friend. Yeah. But you can say she is the one. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how, that's how young people yeah. are, you know, yeah. keeping secrets and... Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, sometimes we don't need uh, uh, explain clear so yeah. people can understand so what that means. So. That, is true. that is true. And uh, this is a question to all of you. Do you have a concept of arranged marriages that we have in India? Like uh, parents, you know, find a perfect girl or a perfect guy for you whom you can uh, marry? No. That starts from you because I think... <laughs> 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 well, uh, like I said earlier, in the past, uh, maybe 30 years ago or 40 years ago, this uh, is usually common, you know, as a, as a young guy, you are growing up, after studying, you start working, your parents back home will take it upon themselves to look mm. for a wife for you. So when they found one, they will call you, okay son, we have a, a gift for you. Then you go back home and they present the young lady to you. 
and then you, I don't know it, how it happened, but you, but if you get married, this happened many years ago. But now? Yeah, but now we're in a modern age. <laughs> Everything is changing. So right now, it's not very common, but it, it still happens. I will explain. Right now, people, as a, a young, a young guy, you know, you when, when you clock maybe 25, 26, but more importantly, when you have source of income, stable income, you know, the next thing on your mind is you need to settle down, you need to find someone to marry, then you probably look for a girlfriend for yourself. Yeah, but age is very important. Most people maybe in trying to you know source for income. You are 25, no job. You 26, 27. You're still trying to find a job. You get to an, a, an age where you it becomes difficult for you. Maybe you are around the 30s and uh, you don't have a girlfriend. And uh, at that point, your parents they become worried and uh, they ask you, okay, we can help you out with this if it's difficult for you. Mm -hmm. So. In some cases, you see this happening, where uh, maybe your mother will call you that there's this good girl I know, she's a very good girl, she comes from a decent family, mm -hmm. she will make a good wife. They can, maybe I'll call it a recommendation, they can recommend okay. a girl for you, so it's left for you to say, okay, yeah, I like her, I can go on. It's no longer forceful. Okay, so, okay. so it's like a suggestion. It's like a suggestion. Mm -hmm. And in, in Russia? Um, no, we don't have the arranged marriages at, at all. all. At all. So that means everybody in Russia who are married, they yeah. have met, you know, one in another way. Yes, uh, usually like in high school or university or any like activities in the universities what you what, that you do. Um, yeah, so people just meet and as you said, when they feel like they want to have a family already and they have job, so they want like, kids, they start like look for a girlfriend or a boyfriend for themselves or they just meet in the university, most common. Scenario. Okay. Yeah. And in China? Oh, in China is similar like in Russia. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I think it's it's uh, we are forming a team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, so I know some young couple is they are just, uh, they know each other so maybe in school, high school or some college or some work, in, yeah, this will be good, so if they want. So that means you don't have arranged marriage at all? I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I think it's maybe, but uh, I don't know, so it's ha maybe happening in China, but I don't know too much. Mm -hmm. It's my my friends also. I, I know the people; they don't have this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, honesty is the best policy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to ask uh, one one very very important question that you might have observed in Germany. Mm -hmm. In Germany, you can have a girlfriend. You don't have to get married, and still you can have a child. Mm -hmm. Is it possible in your culture or in your country? Because I had a colleague in my part-time job mm -hmm. and he was just 18, year, 18 years old and he was father mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, with her girlfriend. So, I mean, I was kind of shocked to, you know, uh, see this scenario. So do you see that? Is it possible in your country to, you know, have a child even without and st still living together without marriage. It's, it's not common to have a child without a marriage. Mm -hmm. So either people first get married then have a child, or if this happens, they they try to get married. As soon as possible. Yes. And? Yeah, this is um, culturally, culturally this is wrong or this is uncommon mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Based on culture, it's not, the, it's not part of our culture for a girl to have a, a child or get pregnant outside wedlock. You need mm -hmm. to get married officially mm -hmm. before you can have a child. Okay, and in China? In China, under 23 years old, they don't allow get married, you, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's also don't allow to have a baby. So, um, but um, um, family and like parents want to, so first you have a marriage and then you have uh, children. It will be better. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's so a it's traditional. So we talked a lot about the big issues right now. <laughs> now. Let's uh, 
go to the like very common questions who is the head of your family your mother or father um, somehow we think that mom takes more responsibility for the child and for the house um, so she knows how things work mm -hmm. and she and is, it, is it still traditional that uh, a father earns some money and mom runs a home uh, the, it's no, now they both earn money, but mom also takes care of the home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say mom in Russia. Okay, okay. And in Nigeria? Yeah, traditionally speaking, uh, the father, <laughs> when I was a child, we were growing up, we always taught in school then that the, the father is the head of the family. So it's still known, yeah, everybody said this, yeah, the father is the head of the family. And uh, the idea was, like you said, he have to go out there and make sure that I have make enough money for the family, and the mother have to take care of the children, make sure mm -hmm. that the home is in order, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but of course, just like she said, the mo mothers now have to work and make their own money also, make their own. Country. So in Nigeria, uh, mother also works. Yeah, now you know mothers work and make their own money and make their own contribution to the family. But um, the idea of who is the head of the family is still is still there that the father is the head of the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so he takes all the decisions and... Yeah, no, when you say taking all the decisions, uh, I don't want it to sound... The mother also has a contribution to decision making. So now. it's like divided So it's almost like divided, yeah. divided responsibility. But I see, we call them the head of the family in the sense that maybe in terms of... Uh, let's say, a, I mean, there's respect, you know, given to uh, the father as uh, maybe the head of the family. Not that the mother can't have a say. The, I mean, our mothers usually have their own suggestion. They make their own money, they make their own contribution. But uh, they have a lot of respect for their husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a lot of respect for their husband. So because of this, this is maybe some related to culture or something. But because of this, we call the fathers as the head of your family. family. So it's difficult for you to, for example, to make a decision without contacting your father. Mm -hmm. even, even after you discuss with your mom, your mom has to discuss with your father. And okay. we both have to agree. I would definitely say we are culturally very much so <laughs> near. <laughs> so it's still there, it's still there. Okay, okay. And in China? In China, my family is, uh, yeah, my, my father is head of the family. So, yeah, because he earns money, uh, the mother he, um, made the, the most of working um, mm -hmm. yeah. of house, yeah, of yeah. family. And uh, yeah, it will be really difficult for mom. Yeah. And uh, talking about extended families, do you have a uh, like a contact, so to say, like a deep contact with your extended families, your uncles and aunts? Do you meet quite often, or it's like once in a year or quite longer? Mm -hmm. uh, for me now, it's very rare because I live in another country. But usually, if you live in the same um, country or city. We call every weekend, or we go visit them every weekend. So I would say once a week we keep in contact mm -hmm. with your uncles and aunts. Uh, no, I would say with grandparents. Okay, with grandparents. We, because we we're pretty close to our parents and grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, uncle and aunts they have like their own families, so we usually meet them at the family dinners. Mm -hmm. There it happens like very rarely, several times a year for uh, birthday of our grandma, for example, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. yeah, if somebody is, quite, is getting married, we have a like celebration, we meet there. So mm -hmm. we usually meet on some dinner parties, let's say, mm -hmm. um, with our uncle, aunts, cousins, their families, but we are closer to our grandparents a okay. lot. Mm -hmm. So once a week we keep in touch. Okay, and how, uh, how often do you meet your siblings? Once you get married, I mean, talking generally. Um, I would say like not very often because people have their work and their kids and blah blah. Mm -hmm. um, but like once a month. Okay, so that, that you can say often. I mean, not if, if you consider often, it often, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Nigeria. Yeah, some part of what she said. Um, for uncles, maybe niece, nephews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, if you live in the same city with them, it's expected that once in a while you visit them. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, not all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course you can call them, if you can't visit them, you can call them to know how they are doing, especially during the weekend. Mm -hmm. Or if they are having maybe their birthday party or a celebration, they will invite you, you have to go. So, and um, 
if you are not in the same city with them, then probably you call them once in a while. I mean, it's, it's funny, but you can imagine that I can't stay for one week without calling the members of my family. Okay, I mean, that just is, like us. So you have to call your, if you don't call your uncle after a week, oh, you for, for one week you've not called me. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I mean, it's something like that. So that shows how large it is. Okay, and uh, in China? So it's will be not uh, too much we meet each other. So maybe just we have a big celebration. It's Chinese New Year. It's a family fest, so we can meet um, every uh, every <laughs> everyone in the in this fest. So it's yeah, it's most it's just one time. So okay, and uh, now it's time for kind of uh, discussion about the patchwork. Do you know the concept of patchwork that happens in Europe? <laughs> no, I, I will explain it quickly. <laughs> I will explain it quickly. Yeah. Here in Germany, people uh -huh. uh, tend to live alone. Uh -huh. Maybe for his uh, or her whole life. Mm -hmm. They don't get married at all. Mm -hmm. So during this uh, period, you know, they have multiple partners and uh, children, but uh -huh. no marriage at all. So do you see it coming in, in China? No. <laughs> okay. no. It is yeah. impossible at this moment, yeah? No, it's very really difficult. <laughs> okay. Okay. For example, in my country, oh, yeah. I don't see it coming in a long time. For example, I would say it will take like 50 more years yeah. to to accept this kind of uh, concept in the society. Yeah, I think it won't happen very soon in Russia either. And in Nigeria? Of course, you, you know the answer. You know, you know, you know, you know there is no space for that. <laughs> yeah, but in this I, moment, <laughs> nobody knows. Exactly, exactly. I mean, things are changing, like I always say. Uh, but right now, presently, nothing of such nature. And I don't see it coming anytime soon. I hope so. I don't know. Okay, now as we have talked uh, everything about family, now it's time to thank our family, but in our languages. So I would ask, uh, what languages do you speak at home generally with your parents? Of course, Russian. Russian. You? Yeah, I'm from the eastern part of Nigeria, and uh, in the eastern part we speak uh, Igbo, although... Igbo? Yeah, Igbo, yeah. Igbo, okay. Yeah. Mandarin is the official language of China. So we were trying to say thank you to our family. Of course, we are thankful for a lot of things, you know, in our life to a family. Mm, yes. So I would say thank you to my family in my language. Mm -hmm. And you have to speak that one mm -hmm. and you have to pass your uh, message in your language and tell him and he will speak your language and for the whole round. You got it? <laughs> I got it, but it's really difficult for you. <laughs> That's what we have to learn. Do you yeah. uh, have to speak Russian? Yes. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So you you just say you love. Uh, I mean, I, I would say I love you all. I love my, you To all. my family. Uh -huh. Yeah? You have to say same in your language. Uh -huh. Yeah? Uh-huh. Who? Who? Tamne. Prim. Karuchu. Okay. Hmm. Tamne. Karuchu. Tamne. Pri karuchu. Prem karuchu. Prem karuchu. Yeah. Again. All together. <laughs> Looking into the camera. <laughs> to which one? <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, hum. Tamne. Kum karuchu. <laughs> no, I did something wrong. Hu Tamne. Hu Tamne. Prem karuchu. Hu Tamne. Prem karuchu. Super. Good. <laughs> um, okay. Just take it easy on me. Okay. Большое. 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 Спасибо. Спасибо. Сей. Сей. Моей. Моей. Семье. Семье. That's good. <laughs> okay. Большое спасибо. Большое спасибо. Сей. Сей. Моей. Моей. Семье. Семье. Берисе, спасибо. Сей, моей. Семье. Семье. О, very nice, oh, very yeah. nice. Yeah, this is oh, good oh, job. Okay. <laughs> good job. Um, you have to pay attention closely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very really difficult. Uh, it's, no, it's not difficult. Okay. Um, In Ibu, yeah? 
Yeah. Um, Emila. Emila. Nem na nam. Emila nem na nam. Nam na nam. Emila nem na nam. Emila. Emila. Nem. 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 Na. Na. Nam. So. Nam. Nam means mother. Nam means father. So Emila means thank you. Mhm. Emila is thank you. Yeah. So thank you, my mom and dad. Emila. Emila. Nem. Nem. Na. Na. No. Emila. Nem. Na. Na. Yeah. Emila. Nem. Na. Na. Yeah. Okay. Emila. Nem. Na. 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 Emila. Nem. Na. Na. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And my language, is is easy, I guess. Is um, I love you. 爸爸妈妈呀，我爱你，爸爸妈妈。呀，哎，是是。我爱你，爸爸妈妈。Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, that's really cool. That's true. So that was it. Thank you so much for coming here and uh, uh, talking about your family. It was really fun having you in the studio and. Uh, oh, thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. It was thank a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yes. We we enjoyed it. So. Uh, it was really nice talking to our guests today. Uh, I would say we are learning a lot of things about different cultures and we will keep exploring a lot of other things about family. See you next time. Till then. Thank you.